Um, is that too much? And how do we minimize our exposure to, uh, to radiation? Well, flying is a great way we get radiation. Yes, going to doctors, and I understand why the doctors and dentists need scans. Uh, the good news is the digital scans are 10 times less problematic than the older scans. So the first question you'd ask, and then you temper it. I hardly ever get them, but I'm not crazy. If I happen to go to the dentist and I haven't done them in 10 years, uh, she or he wants to see it, I'm going to say, okay, you can do one scan here, two scans here, but I'm not going to let them bombard me with scans on a yearly basis. Again, you just pointed out, if you have a fracture, you better get a scan or the doctor's going to make a mistake, even if he's a genius on that one. So yes, there's places and time. But the big one you're getting it from is sitting in front of a computer all day long, having a cell phone stuck in your pocket, or worse than that, affixed to your brassiere. And the work that's been done on that is, is frightening. Stanford University, University of California, Yale University, University of Sydney, look it up. The number one guy is in a Sweden. He's an oncologist. Remember, Sweden and Finland were the birthplace of the technology industry in cell phones. He's been warning them since they opened up the first place. These are going to create disease. But has anyone done anything? They spend millions convincing you it doesn't create disease. Where the Clinton administration, by the way, did a study. They were concerned whether or not this created brain cancer. There was a lot of talk about that then. And somebody that you may remember that we've had on The Real Truth About Health, Dr. Deborah Davis, happened to be the top scientist in America for eight years with the Clinton administration. And she handpicked a group of top scientists to see whether or not, and she read the study and said, no, it doesn't. She retired years later, started to reread the studies, and found out they fudged the entire study. And when she asked them, they said, well, the powers that be stepped in and said, you'll never work another day in science. If this comes out as yes, it creates brain cancer. So you've got to protect yourself. You've got to do what I've done. It took me a year to train myself. When I use a cell phone, I put it on speaker and put it on a table next to me. I don't care if you hear me speaking or not. That's what I do. I'm not sticking it in my head. You don't put it on your body, stick it in your pocket, et cetera. And we make real devices, science-based devices here that work. I have one on me. I haven't taken it off in 10 years. Well, that's not true. Last week, I got a massage for the first time. I took it off in years, and I put it right back on. This is called the high pulse. This works. It's German and Russian technology. Works with even high levels of 60 gigahertz with 5G. Second thing, you have to put one on your phone. We have something called 360. It actually works as a lightning rod. You're not going to get rid of what's around you. You're going to have to have something stronger than you. You're in an electromagnetic field. So electromagnetic radiation wants to hit you, come into you, and it will destroy and de disturb your cell structure and your neurological system. If I have something that's more attractive, the lightning rod, the lightning is going to hit that rather than hit your body. If you're using a cell phone and not using that, you're a little nuts. That's all I can say. That's called 360. So there are ways to protect yourself. To go hide under a rock, I don't think is a viable thing, or go become a monk or a monkstress up in the Himalayas. Most of us aren't going to do it. Great. Thank you for that. And we've got one minute left. So I'll ask you a very short and simple question. How far away should we keep all of these devices from us so that we can use them safely? You should never have a phone in your bedroom at night. You should have a switch if you're building a house that shuts off all of the electronic stuff. And if not, go out to even the dollar store, buy a strip with an on and off switch. And after you brush your teeth, part of it, you shut off all of the computer stuff at night. And by the way, in my bed, I have an electromagnetic fields. I'm building a house as we speak. I'm putting copper in all of the walls, not because I'm crazy, because I'm knowledgeable. There's a difference between crazy and knowledgeable, informed and not informed. I happen to be informed on this stuff. So there are ways to protect yourself. You know, we used to make fun about people that wore aluminum around their head. It has some effects. You may look like a lunatic, but it does have some of it. Not as good as copper. Uh, when I was buying my first electric car, it was a big concern of mine. And I actually got a hold of an engineer out of Tesla. And he said, why do you think we made the bodies out of aluminum? He said, to neutralize the electromagnetic frequency going through it. So there are people who think out of the box and in the right way. So it's been a pleasure once again to be with you. I hope all of you are enjoying the real truth about health. Uh, Stephen and all of his team, you included. Michael, I give you a lot of kudos and keep up your great work. 
We've got to spread truth in the world because there's a lot of deception, lies, as I spoke today in my presentation. Great. Thank you so much. If we can unmute the audience so they can show their appreciation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank